Hello, hello, and welcome. Hello. To the next edition of Monday Night Live. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. This is my beautiful partner in life. Luckily, my wife. We're both hello. married and to each other. <laughs> it's cool. Thank God. I love it. Also, a registered awkward. nurse, certified breastfeeding consultant, and certified health coach. Hello, hello. We're here for the next hour to hang out with you and anybody you invite to join us mm -hmm. and answer questions and talk about stuff that's important to you, to us, to the rest of the world, perhaps. How you doing? I'm doing great. You look great. I'm doing so good. I'm in such a good mood tonight. I ain't she pretty? <laughs> ain't she pretty? Ain't she pretty? Ain't she pretty? If you're new, welcome. In the comment section, you will see blue names with blue wrenches beside them. Those are our knighted and appointed PhD coaches. If they answer your question, you can take that as Dr. Barry answer your question because they have been <clears throat> with us for years and they are professionals. They are also certified health coaches. So pay yep. attention. They are here out of the goodness of their heart. Respect their time. Respect the comment section. If you act non naughty naughty, you will be kicked out. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Any announcements that we need to kick off with? Anything going on? Um <clears throat> yeah. So those of you who are in the PhD community community, which is our private community. VIP members. There is challenges going on currently, but in February, we're going to have book clubs, two book clubs that I know of. One is mine. We're going to read Atomic Habits. And then Coach Alyssa, who's in the comment section right now, she's going to read Tiny Habits. And you can do both if you want to. You can tandem read if you want to. And oh, we'll discuss. Tandem I read. know. Oh. That's the sexy term. Let me sit up a little bit straighter. Welcome to BookTube. Just kidding. That's on my channel. Um, but if you want to join us, you can go to the link in the description. Oh, it's right here on the screen. PhDHealth.community. Uh, right now, we're actually running a free trial membership. So you get 14 days free. And if you don't like it, you can go to your account settings and hit the cancel button. And then you're, you're done. You don't have to hang out with us any longer. But if yeah. you love it, then you get to stay for the rest of the month and participate in all the extra curricular activities that we do over there, which yes. are live streams, discussions. <clears throat> uh, you get support from the coaches, myself, Dr. Barry, and we also do extra live streams in there too. And I suspect there's going to be more of this book club from our other coaches as well. It can be a book mm -hmm. about medicine, nutrition, uh, mm -hmm. life skills. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it can be anything that makes you a better human. They're going to, they're going to be doing book clubs like that. So you can read with somebody. So if you're not a big reader, you probably ought to change that. In the times <laughs> we live in, the more you know. Knowledge is power. Yeah, knowledge knowledge, and the proper application of knowledge is true power. Um, yeah. Teresa, our other coach, she just finished her, I think they finished tomorrow. She did. What book did you do, Teresa? She's in the comment section. But we do things like this in the community all the time. So if you need support, encouragement, or just want to have some fun with a book, then come hang out with us over there. Absolutely. All right. Let's do some questions. What do you say? Let's do it. First of all, I want to know where all you guys are watching from. What city, what state, what country? We we love when you tell us that in the comments. I see Poland, Tennessee. Have you ever heard of Poland, Tennessee? No. I didn't know we hey, had no, Poland, how, Tennessee. How have we been here our whole life and we don't know There's all the so cities? There's so many cities that I've never heard of. Here's somebody from Utah. Carol Jean. Hey, Carol Jean. Carol Jean. Good to see you. Oh, here's somebody from Vermont saying hi to Granny Berry. We'll Granny, to we'll hello, to Granny. We'll get to that. All right, guys. Oh, Teresa did brain energy. So brain energy. everybody who was in Teresa's group, I'm sure benefited greatly from Great reading book. that book. It's also when you read a book with friends, you get so much from the discussion about things, like things that you didn't get from it, someone else got from it, and then you're able to really I feel like you get the experience of rereading a book without yeah rereading it yep. because you get so many perspectives from and you so get the people. other people's yeah. two people can read a book and one and will get something, something different. totally different mm -hmm. yeah and then yeah. you can talk about it exactly it's really cool really cool i love that we're doing that inside the group all right there's serena hey serena how you doing all right let's see we've got a question here uh oh thank you Drew. Drew? thank you very I think much Drew meant to ask the question try again Drew. carrie oh wait let me see if it's attached mm -hmm. no Okay. That's maybe. a sticker. Or maybe you just did a uh, Carrie, 40 year old female, seven months, proper human diet, gained 20 pounds, hypothyroid, MTHFR mutation, 
body still healing? Will intermittent fasting jumpstart the weight loss or hurt the thyroid and the hormones? A hundred percent. Yeah. If you're already eating a proper human diet, then you can bump up the number of hours that you fast each day. I typically fast 18 to 22 hours a day, depending on what I'm doing. And that helps keep my belly flat as flat as it is. And if it weren't for that, yeah. Uh, so you can absolutely do that. There's nothing about fasting that's going to harm your thyroid or any of your other important hormones. Fasting is good for you. And fasting is something that humans have been doing for centuries, for millennia. Every major religion, fasting used to be a major part of the religion. A lot of the religions have kind of let that fall by the wayside because some people consider that to be hard. But if you're eating enough fat and enough protein in your proper human diet, you're going to find that you can fast and it's not that hard. I got a question from Jamie101007. Carnivore during pregnancy, can you do that? Is that okay? 100%. Is it dangerous? 100%. I do want you to try to include two ounces of liver twice a week. It can be cod liver, chicken liver, beef liver, pork liver, goose, pate. duck, chicken, pate, uh, uh, liver worse, Braunschweiger, anything that's got liver in it, I want you to try to include twice a week because of the multivitamin, multimineral nature of, of liver. Liver doesn't store toxins. That's a very popular myth out there. It's absolutely not true at all. But if you're eating eggs and meat and chicken, fish, and then including two ounces of some kind of liver twice a week, or you can buy the, the desiccated liver capsules and take a couple of those, uh, do, take, take those two, two or three times a week. That's perfectly, absolutely fine. There are many human cultures uh, through the millennia that all they ate was meat and they had that they all their babies. They were carnivore moms and then the, the babies breastfed. And then when they weaned the babies, they also were weaned on to meat and ate nothing but meat as well. That's happened many, many millions of times through the millennium. I will say as a book recommendation, the book Expecting Better, there's an audible and a hardcover if you want it really dispels a lot of myths that come along yeah, with pregnancy. One of them is deli meat. So when I was in my first trimester, I, I had a lot of meat aversions, but I could eat deli meat and yeah. just fine. And there's nothing wrong with doing what you need to do. Yeah. Also, in that first trimester a lot of get the protein in. Obstetricians will <clears> say avoid seafood. Right. Total bunk. Raw Total. meat as well. I ate a lot of raw meat, like a lot of raw meat. I craved it. Yeah. Um, a lot of raw seafood, things of that nature. So, Look into that book so you feel okay about eating those type of things without thinking you're going to die. Thank you, Scott, baby. for the super chat. Here's our buddy Chris Cook in Nashville. Chris has an excellent channel on YouTube where he he's a carnivore, and so he makes recipes. And you may think, well, you just put the meat in a, in a pot and cook it. No. Check out Chris Cooking Nashville, and you'll quickly realize that you can be a gourmet chef and it be just meat or keto. So glad y'all are back. Nashville here. Hope things are settling out for you guys. Any PhD tips for dealing with gut issues after a stomach bug? Mm. Yeah. So every now and then we all get a stomach bug. Okay. It's much less likely if you're eating a proper human diet, but it still happens from time to time. You're not immortal. You're not bulletproof. You're just healthier, but you can still come down with stuff like this. And so what happens a lot of times is this will affect your gut microbiome, even into the large intestine. And it, you might have a few days of constipation afterwards, a few days of diarrhea afterwards. You might have just nausea. You might have some temporary aversions to some foods that you previously loved. Uh, all this stuff is going to settle out in a few days and go completely back to normal. OK, if you've still got a few extra pounds you'd like to lose and after you had the, the stomach bug, your appetite's off. Don't eat. Don't eat until you get truly hungry and then start eating your proper human diet food again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's several of our PhD community members in the chat. Just a reminder, yeah. this is the Monday Night Live. It's public. So this is for people that who, who aren't in the community. If you have a question and you're in the community, save those questions for tomorrow night where you don't have to send a super stick sticker to get your question asked. And there's way less people. There's like usually 300 people in yeah, there where tonight will probably reach more like 3000. So yeah, just keep so that in mind. may not see your question tonight. Uh, Ran can cook. Ran can cook. Ran can cook. Dr. Barry is a carnivore diet. Okay. For someone with microscopic colitis, anybody with any form of colitis, 
100%, you need to do at least 90 days of a carnivore diet. Okay. Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, microscopic colitis, IBS, IBD, you need to be on a carnivore diet for at least 90 days. So first of all, you can heal and, and your symptoms are going to get so much better that you can't believe it or go completely away. But then after that, you can start to experiment with low carb foods, low carb vegetables, low carb nuts, low carb berries and say, I wonder if I can eat that again. And you can do uh, week long experiments with each different food to find out if it causes the colitis to come back. But yeah, 100 percent. You need to be a carnivore at least for 90 days, maybe forever. Kim. My 36 year old son has gastroparesis. He's been in the hospital a couple of times. Should he ease into proper human diet? Is there anything he shouldn't do? Yes. And so with gastroparesis, you can absolutely benefit from a proper human diet. But depending on how severe it is, you may have to come at it gradually and convert from whatever diet he's eating right now to a proper human diet. OK. And if you don't know what a proper human diet is, there's a free guidebook you can get down in the show notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and to, so you'll be like, oh, it's like 20 pages long. It's absolutely free. We'll email it to you immediately as soon as you fill out the little form. Check your spam. Uh, yeah, check your spam if you don't see it because it's going to it's gonna be sent to you for free. Uh, but And then it, so if his gastroparesis is so severe that he's having to basically eat uh, frappéed food, uh, blended food, you can, you can convert that slowly to a proper human diet foods that you put in the Ninja or the Magic Bullet. And what we've noticed many, many times, even people with severe gastroparesis, is it gets less severe the lower carb they eat for the longer that they eat that low carb diet. Their gastroparesis improves. Now, I'm not telling you it's going to cure his gastroparesis. I'm just telling you, don't be shocked if his gastroparesis symptoms get significantly less severe. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Nancy. Donald, carnivore for 45 days. DSAP, all over body, almost gone. You're welcome. Welcome. Love it. Huzzah. Thank you, Bruce. Eric, carnivore for a year. All numbers moving in the right direction. I wear a CGM. The past few weeks, serious dawn phenomenon. Wake up at 140 to 150, 100 by days in. Yep. Cold plunges work well. What else can I do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. look, look with fresh eyes at your sleep environment. Now, you may just be under increased stress from work from your spouse, from your next door neighbor. If so, that absolutely can cause this to happen. But look at your sleep environments. You need to think of that as your sleep cave. And I've got at least one, if not two videos about sleep on this channel where I basically hit every single thing that you need to make sure is rock solid in your sleep cave, okay? <laughs> as far as when it comes from noise, temperature, the clothing you wear, what kind of pillow, all that stuff matters. Because if you're not sleeping as deeply and as soundly and as restoratively as you should be, you can have a more pronounced uh, dawn phenomenon. Also, if you're coming down with something or you're getting over something, dawn effect is going to be more pronounced. If, if All you guys out there, if you're just now getting started with keto, ketovore, carnivore, and you're still healing metabolically, your dawn effect could be quite pronounced, but that's going to get better as time goes on. I've also heard from members in the community that when they increase their fat a bit, that made their numbers come back down. Yep. So maybe increase your fat intake and see if that yep. brings and your numbers down. A tip we learned from Dr. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Bright is a, a tablespoon or two of, of butter at bedtime. Some people that helps them sleep so much better. Other people, it doesn't really seem to help. So if you're having trouble getting to sleep or staying to sleep, I'd try a tablespoon or two of butter at bedtime, and you're like probably going, you mean just like a, yes, a spoon. Get the spoon, dig it into the butter, eat it and right before bedtime, and see if that doesn't help you sleep better. For many people, it works. If you look below this video, you're going to see Dr. Berry's channel name, and then underneath it, it says 2.96 million subscribers. Share this video, hit that thumb, tell everyone you know to just to subscribe to this channel. Like, why don't you have three million yet? I'm waiting to celebrate this with him. And he's like, taking forever. It's taking forever. And he's not going to tell you to help him. So I'm going to tell you to help him because three million people who hear this information, that's a huge deal. Because they tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two, two, two people. And before you know it. And hey, so on and so on. 
the and world so, is a healthier place so make sure you share, share this video with a friend or family member that might need to hear this information you know i think 2.96 million is pretty good it's for a really redneck good. from hornwall tennessee it's really good i just want you to hit that three i know yeah i wouldn't mind it right there it's just right there in the three bob just had a second cac uh first was 441 last year this year after uh 17 months of carnivores gone up to 537 trigs are 65 hdl 77 ldl 300 uh no statins and so uh 40 490 so you you went up a little more than 10 percent dr arthur agustin who basically came up with the cac scoring criteria also he wrote the book south beach diet he's a cardiologist in florida the, therefore South Beach diet uh, says that for most people your age, Bob, looking at your um, icon, it, should, it goes up about 20% a year. Each year, it goes up about 20%. So yours did not go up 20%. So many doctors would say, well, yeah, you've actually slowed down the progression. And I would, I want you to repeat the CAC every 12 months. Okay. Uh, to see what your CAC is doing. If you decided, hey, I'm going to take a low dose of a statin that does not cross the blood brain barrier like Crestor, five milligrams, I wouldn't fault you for that at all. Some people add ZD to that. Some people don't. Definitely don't take a high dose statin. Definitely don't take uh, Repatha or Proluent, the PCS, PCSK9 inhibitors. Those uh, probably cause more harm than they do good. Uh, but you, you're, you, you, uh, your triglycerides and HDL are gorgeous. LDL is definitely high. I've got multiple videos about LDL cholesterol on this channel that might help you understand that more if you've got questions, any of you guys. Uh, but, but going up less than 20% over 17 months at your age, many doctors would consider that progress, not a bad thing. Dennis, any validity to drinking hot water before bed or water with baking soda before bed to regulate blood sugar. Uh, see a lot of play for this on the internet, internet commercials. Uh, yeah. I don't know of any physiological reason that hot water would affect your blood sugar in any way differently than cold water. Uh, baking soda is going to make your stomach temporarily more alkaline, less acidic, mm -hmm. but it's not going to have any effect on the acidity in your bloodstream or any other part of your body internally. So I'm not also not sure how that would help blood sugar either because your stomach acid is going to cancel the baking soda within seconds of it hitting your stomach. So I'm not, not sure how either one of those things are supposed to work physiologically. But if you want to try them, I don't think they're going to hurt a thing. And then if you're wearing a continuous glucose monitor, CGM, you can measure and see if it helps. If so, if you're part of our private community, you can report that in the main chat. Hey, I drank hot water at bedtime and it did make my blood sugar go down because I'd love to, to hear that. Hey, shout out to Meg. She says you guys are the best. Uh, February 20th will be my one year carnivorsary and I'm down from a BMI of 27.6 to 20.8. I'll be 55 Sweet. this year and feel like a million bucks. Dude, that is amazing. I think it's a female. Megs. We call we call some females dudes. I do. If they're too. like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, tight yeah. okay, girl, you know, buddies, they can be a dude, right? Bruh. <laughs> Shouldn't it for for like male friends it should be bro and then for female friends it should be bra. Eh, it's interchangeable. You get it though? Yeah, yeah, bra, yeah. Sure, bra. sure. Okay. We're not in Spanish class okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Billy Ray, Billy Boy. I'm a week into carnivore, have had bad diarrhea since starting. How long might this last? So the majority of people, when they convert to carnivore, especially if they do it slowly over a few weeks or a month, they don't have diarrhea at all. But some people, about 10 to 15 percent, will have diarrhea anywhere from three to 10 days. About one percent of people, it'll stretch on out to two to three weeks. Um, this is your gut microbiome rebalancing. All of the carb-loving, sugar-loving bacteria are dying off, and they're revolting, they're rebelling, they're protesting, but they're leaving, which is what you want in the long run. And then you're going to be recolonized with coll collagen-loving bacteria, with meat-loving bacteria, and then everything's going to be hunky-dory, I promise. Hey, thank you, Paul Beter. Paul Beter's in our group. What's up, Paul? Dana Sue. Dana Sue. Dana, Dana, Dana Sue. Sue. Thank you, Dana Sue. Uh, James. James. James Hooper. 
Can't you hear his mama? James Hooper, you get in this house right now. I can. Mm -hmm. Did that give you PTSD, James? I'm sorry if it did. 54-year-old, 469 pounds. Total cholesterol, 152. HDL, 52. Triggs, 108. LDL, 80. A1C, 5.4. No fasting insulin this time. Was elevated two months ago. Down 130 pounds. You ready? Awesome. Stall over after moving to carnivore from keto. Any thoughts? Yeah. So, James, you're probably low in vitamin P, and you're going to have to fix that. You're going to have to start taking a daily dose of vitamin P. Patience. Patience, James. You've lost 130 pounds. Your body is freaking out, okay? Because never in nature would a human body lose 130 pounds, okay? If you started losing weight quickly back in the old days, your body will put the brakes on like, oh, my God, we've We've, we've fell in a hole or we've been tied up somewhere. we got to slow down the metabolism. And so that'll happen when you're losing a lot of weight quickly. You'll have a stall, and that's perfectly normal. Your body's just going, okay, is everything okay here? Why are we losing so much weight? But once you reassure your body and your metabolism that everything's fine, and the way you're reassuring it is by eating food that's rich in fat, rich in protein, rich in vitamins and minerals, it's a carnivore diet. It's a keto diet, right? Then your body's going to, after some number of days or weeks, is going to say, okay, everything's fine. We'll, let, we'll lose. We'll let the weight loss begin again. It's going to happen, James. You're doing wonderfully. Do not dare give up. Thank you so much, Megs. Wow. Thank you. You're the best. Thomas, Thomas thanks for your interview with the VA doctor. Yes. That was today. So yes. if you missed it, you can watch the replay after this. Dr. Mark Kukazella. He is a low carb advocate. He's been teaching his patients in West Virginia how to benefit from a low carb keto carnivore diet for decades. He works in the VA medical system. He's a VA doctor and he's been helping vets, especially uh, vets who've come back with PTSD and metabolic disease. And he has noticed a distinct improvement in the PTSD symptoms with eating a very low carb proper human diet. It's a great interview. You should check it out after this live if you're interested. Hey, Paulo. Paulo is watching from Portugal. Nice. What's up, man? I would Welcome. love to go, go Thanks to Thanks for Portugal. watching. Yeah, same. Thanks, Dana Sue. Uh, Jane. We did that one. We did that already. We did that one. We did that one. Did we do that? Yes, yes. we did. Okay, <laughs> uh, goat. The goat. The goat. Is, in that is house. this the goat or just a goat? A goat. <laughs> Hydronephrosis since I was born. Is it okay to be on a low carb or carnivore diet? You go, you absolutely, in order to protect your remaining kidney function for the rest of your life, you must remain on a low carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet. You've got to be on the proper human diet spectrum for the rest of your life so you don't wind up on dialysis. Okay. The hydronephrosis is already, you've lost some kidney function. I know you have, but you can protect your remaining kidney kidney function by eating a very low carb proper human diet. Also, can I bulk up, gain weight and eat a lot of fat and at least 3000 kilocalories a day? I'm five foot 11, 140 pounds. So if by bulk up, you mean put on muscle? Yes, hundred percent. Just eat carnivore and lift, lift your weights and do it properly and do it consistently. You'll, you'll bulk up uh, to some degree. Some people it's easier to bulk up than others. Now, if you mean bulk up as in gain fat, then just start adding a lot of carbs to your diet and you'll gain fat. But I, please don't do that. You've got to protect your kidney function with a proper human diet. Feel free to chime in if you see something good over there. Erin, oing. A Doing a dairy elimination diet, definitely removing cow dairy, but should I also remove goat and sheep? Thanks. Maybe. I think for best practices, when doing an elimination diet that's specific for dairy, it's best to cut out all dairy and then when you reintroduce the dairy, go from least inflammatory to yep. most inflammatory. Yep. Go and sheep being the least inflammatory. Yep. Cows dairy being more inflammatory yes. for most people. And then also, please tell me where you're buying your sheep milk from because I would <laughs> love to have some sheep milk. We have sheep that I are talk to Nisha about this. Milk all that. Get out there. And she do will it. not. She will not milk the sheep. What's holding you back, farmer? My fingers are too big. They have tiny little teats. They're little, like little tiny teats. See the see the sheep teats? See? No. They're, they're little beady. No, I, I if could... you want the milk, you get out there and you get it, Farmer Berry. It's out. We have so many babies right now. We have so many lambs. Milk it's galore. Yeah. He would just have to take one of the mamas and just mm -hmm. put her in a little area. Mm -hmm. and just, I'll tell you what. You 
take care of the ram while I get one of the ewes and milker. Yeah. You're the one who has the, dumb, the craziest ram on the planet. Our ram put is, him down. His name is Hercules with market. a capital H. He's a douchebag. And he will put you on your ass. It's not a goat. This is a sheep. A also, girl, no, he's a Katahdin. He's a Katahdin. And we have plenty of rams to replace him at this mm -hmm. point. We can get rid yeah. of him We're and have gonna, a nice calm yeah. ram We're beef put him in the or alpha. He, he, was, he was raised and petted and loved on. You cannot do that with a, a ram. Yeah, it makes them crazy. The, they th then because they to think them, you're an equal. to them, knocking the shit out of you, that's playing. Mm -hmm. They think that's just having fun. Mm -hmm. But if they catch you with your back turned, and it, he's like, I don't know, a hundred ninety pound Katahdin ram. He's huge. He would th you you wouldn't be able to walk for a week if he caught you full force. He will just like stare you down too. He's, I don't get in there with him. Yeah, I, it, it's so much fun for him. About every every six months, I have me and him have to have a WWE SmackDown. Right. Yeah. And I literally get out there and wrestle him to the ground and sit on him. And once once I have him on his back and I sit on him for a minute or two, <laughs> that sounded awful. <laughs> You know, I, that didn't sound right, did it? But you know what I mean, you you farmers out there. Then he will, he'll leave me alone for Listen, about six you're months. You're going to get arrested for animal abuse. I don't Shut your mouth. I beat him up and come off the top rope. I just, well, he attacked you first. It's totally Yeah, I put him on his back and hold him down. And that's, he's mean. Then he realizes, anyway, oh, you're the boss. He's going to market. Yeah, he's going and to then, the market. Then maybe one of these days when I don't have toddlers to milk, make milk for my own, you know, then will, maybe will, I'll You'll milk the sheep for me? One of these days. I didn't say tomorrow. Mm, I'm thinking sheep heavy cream in my coffee. Sure, sure. Ooh, yes. Please. All right. Guess what this week is, guys. Guess what this week is. Guess what this, What's this week, week is. Oh, Matthew. It's What day is it? February 4th. You better not. You no, know what day? I mean, what day of the weekend is it? Saturday. Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. Party? Wait, I think it's Sunday, actually. <laughs> so, it's anyways, just... we're going to have fun on my YouTube channel doing all my favorite things. If you want to come hang out with me and have a birthday party, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be on my mm -hmm. channel. We're going to party hard, too. I'll tell you how old I'm going to be. Oh, over on your channel. No, I'll tell them now. I'm yep. going to be 38. 38. 38. 38. You know what that means? Means you're 21 with nine years experience. That means I was in I was a senior in high school 20 years ago, and I'm sorry that just I just can't compute that. It makes you no sense old, to me. Like, hi. hello, Loki. Say hi. This is Loki, one of our rescue kitties. She makes an appearance lately a lot. <laughs> Y'all, Granny Berry is watching this. She's living with my folks down in Alabama. She's 93 years old, and she eats low carb, sometimes keto, but usually low carb. Mm. <laughs> Unless there's some jelly. Or some, <laughs> what is that little candy bar? Those little bitty single. She likes granny. Almonds, jo almond joys. Got to keep the A1C down. Y'all say hi to Granny Berry and tell her where you're watching from. Or she mounds. Does she like the nuts? She likes the ones with the nuts. So mounds. mounds. Almond, no, almond, almond joy. Almond joy. Almond joy yeah. But she only eats the little baby ones. And she tries to ju justify that to me. And I'm like. She's how old? We're gonna let her get away with it, okay, y'all. Occasionally, Granny, not too often. Thank you. Only when you beat Daddy at cards. Thank you for the birthday wishes. It's gonna be a fun weekend. Oh wait, I didn't do T Angel, did I? T Angel recently diagnosed with alpha gal syndrome. I react to all mammal meat, including dairy, mm -hmm. poultry, and seafood. Doesn't feel completely satiating. I know you're you're in a quandary. What you is so? First of all, alpha gal is the the syndrome you get when you get bitten by the Lone Star Tick. I think that's right. Yeah. And then you can't eat the meat of mammals. And not, so first of all, not everybody that gets bitten by a Lone Star develops this. It's only about 10% of people. And then also, this is not permanent, Pea Angel. You'll eventually, within three months to three years, you'll be able to eat mammal meat again. But what you're going to have to do is live on poultry and, and fish and eggs. And you're going to have to add fat. That That's why you're not feeling satiated because there's not enough fat in the chicken and the, the other poultry and the seafood. You have to really add the fat, okay? Uh, and then I'd say every three months, try some try some beef. See if you can, and, and at some point you'll be like, oh yeah, I didn't react to it, okay? Make sure and do that in a safe environment. But yeah, uh, I haven't met anybody yet that it wasn't gone within three years. Now there may be people out there, but what I'm seeing is three months to three years, it just kind of peters out and goes away. I'm terrified I know, that I I'm going to get that. Know. And I get bitten by about 100 ticks a year. 
at least. And so yeah, really I, haven't, I haven't developed it yet. In the summer, we have to have tick dates is what yeah. I like to yeah. go. She, she uh, checks me for ticks. There's a song, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, speaking of songs, I asked you guys mm. about the song, Beef, Butter, Bacon, and Eggs. And about half you guys said you love it. Half you said not so much. So I would like to put a call to action out there. If any of you guys know, or if you are musically oriented and you write and record songs, or you know somebody, we would love to have a rap version. We'd love to have an acapella version. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have a version with a cello. Oh my gosh. A jazz version. Redo the song if you don't like it. I'm going to do my own version. And she's going to do her own version. What's gonna it going to be like a... It's going to be funny. Oh, funny. Put that way. Okay, it's going to be a... You do a comedy. It'll version. be a little yeah. ironic. Yeah. You could do a video, make a music video of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs with your style put to it. That'd be so awesome. I'd love to see that. I hope somebody does that. Okay. Uh, Peta, carnivore 10 months, lost 18.5 kilos. Nice. That's like, what, 40-something pounds. Female, 55 years old, 5 foot, uh, currently 78 kilos, was going well due to your show. Saw myself uh, just diagnosed stage 2 lymphoma. Devastated. Carnivore can't fix this, uh, but can't go back to plants either. Feel helpless. So keep in mind, Peta, that there are hundreds of ways that a proper human diet is benefiting. It's not going to cure your, your lymphoma. Did you say lymphoma? Or lipedema. No, I'm sorry. I totally misread that. It's not, it's not going to cure your lipedema, but it is going to decrease the severity of your lipedema. I just did a live with my good friend Siobhan Huggins. And Siobhan is not spelled like it sounds. If you're not Scottish or Irish, you wouldn't know that. I feel like with the popularization of that name lately. Yeah, yeah. But watch that video because Siobhan has lipedema. And her lipedema is much less severe. And she's on a, a high-fat carnivore diet. And she'll cycle out back into high-fat keto sometimes, but she typically stays high-fat carnivore. And that's where she has the least amount of lipedema symptoms. Solo Boss. Is lemon juice in my soda water okay? I've lost 13 kilograms so far. So at least up to this point, it was completely fine. Now, if what you mean is two or three drops of lemon juice just for flavor, 100%. Keep doing that. Don't ever stop that. Tastes delicious. But if you mean the juice from an entire lemon, there may come a point where that's too many carbohydrates. And a lot of you are like, there ain't no sugar in a lemon. Yeah, there is. Okay. But, but let's, let's list. It let's, may let's, or may not be too many carbs for you. This is the PhD is a spectrum. Exactly. All right. And that's in the right. middle of the spectrum, that's where most people fall. The people who a few drops, even a whole lemon where that's going to affect you, they're over here. It's few and far between, and it's probably not you, bro. So you can just like, it's okay to have a little lemon. Oh, look at, that. Look at this normal distribution curve logo over here. Uh, you have to click on the so one that you're on. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. There you go. This is a normal distribution <laughs> curve. Every human in the planet falls under this. So for the vast, this is where most people sit here. Okay. There's a few people okay. here, a few people here. Shut up. They sit right there on the set. <laughs> She's a pervert. God. It does look like a boob, okay? Oh, it does not it look, does uh, look like well, a Well, I mean, it does. I guess it's somebody's boob. It looks like that. So <laughs> for the vast majority of people here, all the way over to here, one or two drops, three drops of lemon juice is never going to be a problem, okay? Now, for some people, uh, the juice from a whole lemon is going to be too, many, too much sugar. Does that make sense? But for the, that's oh, right. Here, these people, right that's too much. Maybe these people, that's too much. But for the vast majority of people, that's going to be fine. If that's the only carbs, the only sugar you, you have during the day. Yeah. This is a normal distribution curve. Every answer we give you is based on this curve. Isn't that cool? A pimple. Yeah, it kind of looks like a pimple. No, totally right. Yeah, yeah. Like. Does it make you want to be um, <laughs> How many people's Who's wife? Here? <laughs> how many people's wife? If you've got a pimple or some kind of something, you this is how your wife's like. Oh, let me look at it. I'm like, put your hands in your pockets, then you can look at. Okay, it. What other husband like, has to say that? Oh, really? Because what, hands behind what are your you back. doing with this? Like, this is normal distribution. <laughs> are you new? Listen, we keep it fun and entertaining over here. You if you want know. this stagnant, boring you information, you're just going to have to go somewhere else for that, okay? <laughs> uh, Bruce, 
iodine, three drops daily. Last TSH was 0 0.029. 3T4, 0.85. Previous TSH was 1.49. Uh, T4 not tested again. Can iodine be the cause? Are you having any symptoms, Bruce, of uh, hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism? If your answer is no, then these numbers are perfectly fine. If your answer is yeah, then you need to go see your doctor and be evaluated. There's nothing about iodine. Three drops a day of 2% Lugol's, that's, that's under... Uh, 10 milligrams. That, that is in no way going to cause any problems. Uh, some people take way more than that. So the average Japanese person gets about 16 milligrams of iodine a day. Okay. So no, it's not going to cause you to have hyper or hypothyroidism. It's not going to cause Hashimoto's or make Hashimoto's worse if you're getting enough iodine for your body. But if you're having symptoms, you need to see your doctor and, and be thoroughly evaluated but the iodine's not causing anything. And if you have no symptoms, these numbers are fine. Good hey question. guys, did you know, this is YouTube. This yeah. is not a patient doctor experience. This is not medical advice. Mm -hmm. Even in our community, it's still not medical advice. Dr. Barry's not your doctor. It's simply for education and also entertainment because we're yeah. normal people over here. And uh, so just keep that in mind that if you have any concerns at all, always talk with your provider. And if you don't like your provider, then find a new one. It is worth the drive. To have a good doctor. To have a good doctor. 100%, 100% agree. Speaking of fun, why don't you tell them what Beckett said today? Okay. You know, so, this is so cute. I like to boil eggs lately. I'm on a boiled egg kick, all right? And Beckett was helping me. He loves to help me cook. If you follow me on my channel, you've seen him in the kitchen with me. He's a very good sous chef. And I was boiling eggs, and we were, we were peeling them. And uh, he said... Are you going to eat these bald eggs today? And I said, they're boiled eggs, honey. They're boiled eggs. And he said, well, some people call them bald eggs because they look like Poppy's head because he's bald. So some people call them bald eggs. And I, honestly, I couldn't argue with him because we live in West Middle Tennessee. <clears throat> and honestly, most people around here probably say bald eggs. Yeah. And what that means is boiled eggs. But we really say bald eggs. So he thinks that boiled eggs, boiled eggs are called yeah. Bald eggs, and honestly, who can argue? But with now that? that you think about the it, the logic, the 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 less convex uh, end of the egg does favor Poppy's hand. It does. Yeah, I mean, it kind of does. So from now on, we will now refer to boiled eggs as bald eggs. Yes, and that's just how. Plus, it's also, be. some people in Tennessee kind of say, say bald eggs. Bald eggs, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tulsi's next X. Uh, sorry, Tulsi, about that, Jeanette. Patient uh, part one. No, we can't do parts. We're, we're live tonight, Jeanette. Yeah, ask this tomorrow in the, the private chat. We will never find part two. Yeah, I will never find part two. I'm so sorry. Uh, trucking Life with Sean. I have a trucking channel. Love to have you on. Hi, Sean. Oh, Sean, if you eat a proper human diet, brother, I, I would love to be on. Are you a member of our group? because that'd be the quickest way to get hold of me is mm -hmm. to be a member and then reach out to Nisha or Alyssa, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. and they'll get it to me. We're working on getting a email set up that is actually for these type of things. Yes. We don't have it yet. Six years in. <laughs> you eat? You eat? You? I feel like a failure with two master's degrees. I didn't enjoy it. I cursed for not following my passion. I don't know what to do. I'm close to 30. You eat? Listen to me. You've got two master's degrees. We know you're not dumb, right? You're an intelligent person, number one. Number two, you've got two different master's degrees. So you've, you've specialized in two different areas. Now, I don't know what your master's degrees are in, but I'll bet you that if you look at this with fresh eyes, instead of looking at the past with all the potential failures that might be there, all the missed opportunities, Turn your head around, look to the future and say, okay, I've got these two things. How can I use them? To follow my actual passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your passion? What do you love? And then how can you apply these two master's degrees to that in order to, to get paid? Yes, of course you want to get paid, but you also want to help people. You want to make the world a better place. You can absolutely do that, but you can't do it with your head looking at your ass. Okay. You got to turn around. Look to the future and say, okay, what do people around me need? Okay, what special skills do I have? And then how can I use these two, the, the education, the knowledge from these two master's degrees? How can I put that all together and package it up and make it something that people are willing to pay for? You have your whole life ahead of you. 30, 
done nothing. Yeah, dude, That's you're nothing. young. You're still a young buck. You got this. Okay? Keep me updated on how this goes. David, I was about a week into the carnivore diet and my teeth started hurting while eating. Is It was hard to eat. Any tips? <clears throat> I'm not sure why your teeth would start hurting. I've never heard this complaint. Have you heard no. this? I've never heard this before. Unless you're not used to chewing, then maybe. This could absolutely because be the case. a yeah. lot of times the sad diet is Oosh. soft food yeah. that you don't have to really work at. Yep. And when you come back to eating meat, which mm -hmm. requires you to put in a little effort, mm -hmm. that could be causing it. Yep. Um, as you come back to eating real food that makes you chew. Yeah, that's potentially possible. That yeah. could be what it was. Go to ground beef for a while and see if it doesn't ease up. Yep. And then keep in mind that as you continue carnivore, the, the ligaments holding your teeth in place and the bones holding your teeth in place, the stress from chewing the meat is going to strengthen both of them. Absolutely. Trucking life. Uh, oh, lost wow. 50 pounds <laughs> listening to you. Yep. And so, oh my God. I actually spoke at the yeah. truck driver convention in Louisville last year or year before last. I think it was last year. Yeah. And there's maybe 50 truckers that came to hear my talk. That's amazing. They, but let me just tell you, there was uh there was fresh donuts and there was <laughs> right. everything. Yeah, yeah. Because and that so, wasn't the focus. <clears throat> right, right, right. But I was yeah, I'd love to come on your channel, brother. And uh I'd love to go back to the truck show one day because Sean, truckers need it. If you can find me on Instagram, send me a message on Instagram because I'm far less busy than he is. He's got way more people messaging him yeah, and we'll yeah, try to we'll get you set up. We'll set something up. Carl having some weight gain edema. From, from water retention, strict carnivore almost two years. Could sausage sausage bacon cause this uh, sodium electrolyte imbalance? No. Carl, you need to go see your doctor, okay? There, there are four things that can cause new onset edema. Heart issues, liver issues, kidney issues, okay? And it could be a an electrolyte, sodium, potassium issue, but your diet's not causing that. I'm afraid you've got an undiagnosed medical condition that your doctor may have missed. You need to go back and say, hey, look, I'm not doing anything different here. And all of a sudden, this edema came out of nowhere. Keep in mind, some over-the-counter medications can cause edema. Some prescription medications can cause edema. I actually have a YouTube video about medicines that can cause edema. Uh, but you need to get this sorted. You need to figure out what's causing this. But it ain't the diet. Sean? Sean. Sean, I you think? think? Sean. Is extended fasting safe for low thyroid? Yes, any amount of fasting is safe for any thyroid issue. There, there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, you shouldn't fast if... No. Fat, every human on the planet, every ancestor of every human fasted. It was called starving. It's when you didn't <laughs> kill anything for four or five or six or See seven or eight or nine or ten days. You didn't eat because there was nothing to eat. Humans, The human body is perfectly okay with fasting, especially if you've got lots of stored extra body fat because it can just burn that fat and act like nothing's going on. That's his answer. Here's my Yeah, answer. now Anisha's answer. <clears throat> this is for your wife, right? I'm assuming because it says when it comes to a woman. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if she does, if she hasn't done keto or ketovore or carnivore, Tell her to just eat that way till she feels not hungry for a while. Like yes. one day she will get so busy. She'll look down at her watch or her iPhone and look and see it, that it's 2 p.m. and she hasn't eaten yet. She forgot to eat. Yep. That's that's the point where most people can say for sure they are fat adapted. And from that point on, she can start doing a eating window, which is where you eat for a certain amount of hours and you fast for a certain amount of hours. And then when she gets comfortable doing that, and she can do extended fasts for like 24 hours and then 48 hours if she loves it. Yep. Does yep. she have to fast to do a proper human diet, Dr. No, Perry? she does not. No. But it, it marries perfectly with the high protein, high fat. Yes, diet. but Absolutely. it should feel good. She yep. should not feel uncomfortable, yep. hangry, angry, upset, annoyed. Yep. It may be uncomfortable a little bit in the beginning when she first gets used to it. But if she's hungry, Tell her to eat as long as she's eating fatty meats and low carb veggies if she's allowing for vegetables in yep. her way of eating. Absolutely. Uh, everybody, I want to know what way of eating are you currently practicing? Vegan, standard American diet, low carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore. Tell me in the comments. I want to see what I want to see what the distribution is. 
I, I bet you it's going to follow the normal distribution curve. <gasps> but I want to see. Tell me in the comments which way. I don't know. Eating. I think a lot of your people eat carnivore. I'm not carnivore, by the way. So yeah. just so you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> carnivore. She's Although kidding. I get labeled with it. Yeah. All the time. Like, That's all not the time. carnivore. She's like, oh, no. I know. No. Or it's like, look at this carnivore doing it wrong. Like, like what? No, I'm not even not carnivore. Kidding. Like, you're not even making a good point. I don't do that. EMS dying rocked. Being vegetarian seven years, considering changing that. But the idea of eating meat does bother me. Any suggestions about getting over this? It'll be hard. I, I love it that you asked this question. I love it that you're here. You're welcome here. First of all, vegetarian can be very low carb if you do it right. Okay. Can you eat, do you eat eggs? I hope so. Do you eat dairy? I hope so. Do you eat fish? Oh, please tell me you eat fish and, and, and oysters and crustaceans and shellfish. If so, you can just eat more of that and less of the, the, the high carb fruits and veg. And that can be a very healthy, low carb diet. For many, many people. Now, if you're, if I don't know what you look like, but if you're very overweight, then you're going to want to lower the carbs more than that, probably. But, but you can slowly transition. Okay. And so just bump up the fish, bump up the eggs, bump up the dairy, and then bump down the highest carb of the fruits and the vegetables that you're eating. Does that make sense? Get rid of all the grains. Get rid of all of the sugar and added sugar and all that stuff. Get rid of the vegetable seed oils. Okay. But then, and then, then I would start with chicken next. Don't you think you were, you were vegetarian for a minute. I was raw vegan. Raw vegan for a minute. <laughs> Not long, but for a minute. It's nearly a year. Jeez. I know. Before I knew her, I would have, I would have. I was, real, I was a baby. I was like 20. Okay. Yeah. She didn't know better. But, and so I would guess I've never been a vegetarian, but I would guess that adding chicken would be a logical next step. It's not quite to the, you know, big, nasty, fatty ribeye, but it's more. Does that make sense? Don't and then say you, nasty, fatty. That's ribeye. That's rude. I know. I know. But <laughs> that, for, for her now, that may make Start sense. With what's I'm trying the to talk most, to her. Listen, Ellie, what sounds good to you that yep. fits in the food groups yep. of protein yep. that is animal yep. protein? Yep. Start there. Yep. Don't make a jump because you think Dr. Berry That's is right. going to stab yep. you because you didn't eat a ribeye today. Let me, you let know? me like, be very clear. I agree with you. <laughs> I, let me be very clear, EMS Dying Rock. I don't think you ever have to eat beef. And I know some carnivores just wow. drop their, they just drop their wow. beef. Yeah. I think for certain people with certain DNA, certain heritages, I think they could do perfectly fine on a carnivore diet that's seafood and poultry. Now, I couldn't. And a lot of people couldn't. But I think some people would be just fine doing that. Okay. But you can stick there until you're ready for the next step. And you can, this can be baby steps. I don't care if it takes you a year. It might. That's yeah, okay. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. But you can do it and you should do it. But it doesn't have to be on a time <clears throat> timetable. You don't, you're not on the clock here. I know many people in our group do a Mediterranean carnivore yep. and they eat lots of fresh seafood. Yep. Now, I do think if you're going to eat poultry, you should try to get the best quality that you can get. That's yep. pasture raised, yep. you know, none of the cheap stuff. If you can afford it now, yep. if all you can afford is the cheap stuff. Then that's still better than the Cheetos yep. Doritos diet. Yep. Right. Okay. So there are many people who are formerly vegan or vegetarian that they just cannot bring themselves to eat mammals because mammals, they, they have faces and they're warm blooded and they they're cute when they're babies and they, they love their babies, and I totally get that. So don't eat mammals until let that be your last thing, and just keep slowly moving that line. And before long, you'll we'll be meeting you in Nashville, and you'll be tucking in a big old fat juicy ribeye. But it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Take mm -hmm. your time. Take your time. You're moving the right direction. I think a lot of matters. people try to rush into something yeah. because they think that that's the goal line. Yeah. Like if they don't get to what Ken Berry is doing, that they're not doing it right. right. And that's not the message we that's are right. trying to portray here. That's right. What we want you to do is find where you are on that. Where is it? Oh, it's where in your brain. It? 
Yeah, it's really handy, isn't it? On the pimple. There it is. We're there gonna go is. with pimple. There we go. We're, we want <clears> you <throat> to find where you are on the pimple, and the best way to do that is by doing a ninety-day carnivore elimination diet. Okay, this is just gonna cover it up. I don't know why. Well, you, um, I don't know. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay. you found her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Find where you fit here. The best way to do that is to do 90 days of carnivore, but you don't have to do that today if you just found the keto, yep. right? Move your way through the spectrum. Get to the 90-day carnivore elimination. Do that protocol. Yep. Reintroduce the foods that you love. See how you tolerate them. And then build your proper human diet. There are some things that will never be on a proper human diet. Like, no, they bet me like I don't have to say those things to you. Like, you yep. know you know, a donut is not yeah. on here. Right? And that stuff I do want you to remove immediately. Mm -hmm. All the highly processed, high carb crap. No, none of that's healthy. Stop all that immediately. And that includes bread. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. But it does. Even even homemade bread. We used to make bread all the time. Yes, we did. It was good. It was so back tasty. in the paleo days. That's back when I was fat. Remember that? You were not I fat. I was chunky. No, you weren't. I was a little chunky. I mean, a little. Lori. So was I. 51-year-old female lost 57 pounds, stalled for two months, working nights at the hospital. Oh, honey, that's that. Mm -hmm. Eating strict carnivore. Any suggestions? Yeah. Number one, move to day shift. Sorry. I know. Shift if, shift if it just. Yeah, no. yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be an x-ray tech, and, man, I would I only work nights and weekends because of that shift. DNA. Yeah. That's the only way I got paid worth of crap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do not eat while working. Just bring bone broth to sip. That's smart. perfect. Very mm -hmm. smart. Um, but if you can, if you can handle the financial loss, get on day shift. That's going to help. And also, it's time to get a full thyroid panel. Now you've only been stalled for two months, so it's not even really technically a stall yet. You don't. You're not in a weight loss stall until it's been going on for three months. You, this may be a pause, temporary pause, but. If it's still going in another month, it's time to go see your doctor and get a full thyroid panel, like I talked about in the book, Common Sense Labs, and get uh, sex hormones checked because there could be a medical reason why you've stalled out. But you hadn't stalled yet. This is just a pause. Yeah, and congratulations. That's yes, amazing. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you, DH. I'm John. Today, I came to know that I get acid reflux and heartburn after consuming dairy. Yeah, I'm John. I'm just going to guess from your name, you're lactose intolerant. Uh, will butter and red meat help with reducing both? Yes. Also, can I recover depersonalization with carnivore? I think I, I have seen so many, many mental health issues improve on a carnivore diet that I am almost convinced that any mental health disorder is going to improve at least to some degree eating a carnivore diet. Okay. And, but yeah, butter is probably the only dairy that you should eat. MJ, MJ. And then red meat, it doesn't have any lactose in it. It doesn't have any caseins or any ways. Uh, that that should do it. That should fix it. Yeah. And I would love to, to hear from you in three months about the depersonalization. Carnivore power of healing. Hello, gorgeous sissies. This is Estrada. I am trying to do my part like Dr. Berry always tells us, please check out my videos on YouTube doing therapeutic exercises. All right. Lion Diet 1124. Thank you, community. Love the meat. So there, if, awesome. if, if you want to do some therapeutic exercises, there's your YouTube channel right there. I love it. Thank you very much for that. DH, can I reverse and heal uh, spondyl spondylosis? Is that what you mean? Or spondylolisthesis? Because these are, these are anatomical issues. You're not going to cure them, but what you are going to do is you're going to reduce the severity of the symptoms. Spondylosis. Spondylosis, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to reduce the severity of the symptoms, but you're still going to have spondylosis. Grand Paul's Barbecue Game Cap. Hi, I've just gone carnivores. Chicken curry with coconut oil and coconut milk allowed and chili with three-fourths fresh tomatoes for the sauce. No. Because that's, gonna, that's not carnivore. Going to be too. That's not carnivore. Now mm -hmm. you could do a version of this, and it'd be absolutely keto, mm -hmm. which is fine if you want to be keto. You might could do this, and it'd be ketovore. And if you don't know what ketovore is, Nisha's got a bunch of videos on her channel explaining what it is. Uh, not everybody has to be a carnivore, but the the coconut oil, the coconut milk, the chili, the, the like, tomatoes. Can, can someone listen? Listen for a minute. You want to say it again? Yes. Not everyone needs to be a carnivore. 
Now, I think most people need to do 90 days yes, of carnivore. I think anyone who wants to know how yes. their body reacts to food and give their gut a chance to heal. Yes. And like just like do something hard, right? That's good on for everyone to do something hard. That's a good mental exercise. All or right? something different. Or something different. Yeah. But not everybody needs to be carnivore for the rest of their life. Not everybody needs that. Some people do. I do. She does not. Most of your nutrition should come from animal meats and animal proteins most, like yes. eggs. That's where your new they kept why? Because it is the most like it's where all the nutrition is. If you compare meat and eggs to vegetables and fruit, meat wins every time. Eggs definitely eggs win. win. Yeah, every, every, time. Time. every time. But does that mean you can't have anything else ever? No. Maybe, but maybe not. And to know that, you really need to do the elimination diet and reintroduce those foods and take the time, 90 days. It's not yeah. that long, honestly. Yeah. And understand your body, your disease processes, how you react to foods and your symptoms, where they come from. What foods are they coming from? Yeah. Are they coming from nightshades? Are they coming from dairy? Or are they mostly coming from the junk at the carbs. gas station, right? Carbs, yeah. 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 But, and I'm not even saying that this is bad. I'm just no. saying, is it too many carbs for you? I don't know. Wait, what? What? Somebody no. said you just hit 3 million. No, he did that. Really? No. No, no he didn't. No, <laughs> that no he cool. didn't. That'd be cool, but I don't think so. Uh, Mona. Go ahead. I love making dehydrated oh, ribeye. Make, make me They're some. chips, right? Just steak and salt. Will this remove any nutrition from the steak, or is it better to eat cooked on the stove? Good question. So the more you cook meat, you are going to lose some. Let me be very clear here because people mishear me. You're going to lose some of the vitamin content. Some, not a lot. Not a deal breaker. A little. The more you cook meat. And so I want all you guys, if, if currently you're like Granny Berry and you want your sirloin well done. Sirloin. Sirloin. That's what she calls it. You got to, I want you to just go back to medium well for, for a month or two or three and then try to eat it medium. The less you cook meat, the higher the vitamins are going to be 100%. But I know many carnivores who have been carnivores for decades who eat all their meat well done. And they don't have scurvy. They don't have any medical problems, no vitamin or mineral deficiencies. But And so you are going to lose a little bit of the vitamins, but still up 1,000 times eat the eat the, the ribeye chips versus eating the Doritos. Yes, do that. Okay, we're going to finish up here. I just want to mention this because he's apparently not going to talk about it. Lies My Doctor Told Me is going to be redone, and this is the third edition. Third edition. There will be a third edition of this book it's going to have about 20 more chapters also some re lives. some revisions because what he knew seven eight years ago when he wrote this book all right was different from yeah. he's put in years of research after this book so some things will be revised i got a message the other day and i was like consider when that book was written right so uh the publishing house victory belt has agreed to republish this Add chapters, add context. I, add all, I mean, I don't know how many pages it's going to be, but right now it's 200. It's probably going to end up being 500 probably. when we're done with it. Yeah. Um, so just so you guys know, that will probably not be till next year. Next year yeah. But I wanted to let you know. New, yeah. new edition. So coming. this is now a limited edition. Right. Get so your copy. If you don't have now. a copy, you better get one because it might be a might. It might be a collector's item. Also, I would I would venture to to like predict that there will be a new audible done and this lovely southern gentleman voice will be narrating it is this is this what you want to do probably yeah. yeah so we'll do that. yeah that's that's coming and we're super excited about that so put that mark your calendars Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I swear to you, every time we do a live stream, somebody's like, I thought I was subscribed and I'm not. So check your subscription status. Yeah. If you want to come hang out with us in the PhD community, there is a link in the description. Click on that, choose your level, and we'll be live in there tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. But if you just don't want to see more of our witchy banter, you can just hang out with us next Monday because that's where we'll be, yeah. right here. Yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks oh, for yeah. sharing this video. Get the thumbs up on the way out. 
And then go watch my, my interview with Dr. Mark Pukazilla called Keto Carnivore for Poor Folks. Because me and him used to both be broke as a joke, and we know how to get her done. You just you got to watch that video just to see what he pulls out of his desk drawer when we're talking about uh, low uh, cost effective keto carnivore. He's like, oh, wait, I've got something right here. I'll show you. Oh, wow. And he actually shows you what he's about to have for lunch. And if you like books and food, you can come hang out with me over on my YouTube channel. It's just my bar. name. Just type in N E I S H A, Attack by a Cat. And that'll pull my YouTube channel up. I'll see you over there or I'll see you next week. Thanks, Bye. guys. See you later.